Hey, what's up? Jonah Fox here, and today I want to talk to you about harmonica positions. So if you have ever wondered what the best position is or how they're different from one another, then this is the video for you. Today I will be comparing each main harmonic position, and I'll just cut to the chase and tell you what you need to know about each one. So there are three common positions. That's first position, second, and third positions. These three positions are what I'm going to be covering in the majority of today's video, but in total, there's actually 12 positions. And if you wanted to really explore the harmonica's possibilities, then you can also try those extra positions as well, the main ones being fourth, fifth, and twelfth positions, which I will cover very quickly at the end of today's video, okay? So this isn't going to be totally basic, we're going to explore some of the alternative ones as well. Harmonica positions tell you what the root note is, okay? So starting from that root note, you can usually play a few different scales in each position, okay? So did you catch that? Positions are where each scale starts, where the root note is, but from there you can usually play a couple different scales, which is going to depend on your ability to bend, blow bend, and play overblows. So each position has a distinct sound, and when you change positions, you are also changing how the bends and chords function, okay? The notes are going to be the same, but because you're playing in a different position, they're going to have a different function musically, and where those bends are are also going to change how they function as well. So you just keep that in mind. Each position, yes, it's different. It has different scales, but it also has a different function of the chords and the bends, and that's why each position feels so distinct. So let's go over positions one, two, and three, and then I'll teach you about some of the extra positions at the end of the video. Let's get started with first position. So first position it means that you are playing the harmonica in the way that it was designed. The root note is going to be the same as your labeled key. So I'm playing a C harmonica, so... So the key is C, and then you're going to base some scales off of that. So in first position there are two main scales that you should learn. Uh, one is your normal major scale. Okay, it's very basic, very common. It's pretty easy in the middle octave and the high octaves, but it's full of bends in the low octave. Take a listen. So that's not so easy. Musically, the major scale in this position is especially great to learn songs with. Many songs have melodies that use the major scale, and that means there's a lot of tunes that you can play pretty easily in this position. You just gotta learn where the notes fall. You can also play another scale here, which is the major pentatonic scale. Take a listen. Okay, the major pentatonic is a variation of the major scale, and it's going to work for blues music, which the major scale really won't work for. So if you want to play blues in first position, that's how you would do it. It's pretty basic in the middle octave, but there's a lot of bends and blow bends that can be used to add expression in the high and low octaves as well. So just keep in mind, there's the major scale, but there's also the major pentatonic that can be used for first position blues. Next, let's talk about the chord. So on a C harmonica, we would have three main chords. We have a C. Okay. Then we have a G. And a D minor. Now there are some variations and two note chords you can play as well, but those are the main ones we're going to use in each position. Now when we change positions, as I said earlier, the chords are going to be functioning differently because you have to interpret those chords in a new key. So in this key, C major, the chords would work like this. C is your one chord. This is the tonic, it's like home bass. G is your five chord which is a dominant chord. In this position, it has a feeling of being kind of conclusive and final, and it really wants to move back to the one chord. Take a listen. I personally really like how the chords work in first position. They're not as good as far as like playing these kind of rhythm jams that we can do in second position, but you could just be soloing. And then you can break out into these big, thick chords. So 
So that is a nice thing to be able to do. Overall, first position playing, it just feels very nice and easy. This is where most beginners start, right? Playing in first position feels kind of folky and open, and it's musically very straightforward. It's good for pop, some rock, folk, country, jazz, and more. It's really worth spending more time on. Even if you're a kind of person that only likes to play in the blues, I think first position should not be slept on. Let's move on to second position, which you could also call cross harp. Now, second position starts on the same note that is the fifth note of your first position major scale. Let's figure this out here. So the C major scale on a C harmonica, we're going to find the fifth note of that scale. So we have C, D, E, F, and G. So got that? G is the fifth note. And that's going to be where second position starts on the note G. So we know that we're starting on the G and we're playing in second position. And in this position, we have at least three important scales that you can play here. I'll go over the basics, but consider grabbing a free copy of my scale cheat sheet downloadable PDF. It will show you every main scale that you can play along with notes, tabs, and scale degrees. It's totally free. The link is down below in the description. So go check that out. All right, let's go talk about these scales next. Because of the specific note layout in second position, there are more opportunities to bend notes to access new pitches. And because of that, there are more notes available. So we have more options as far as scales. So we have two main scales in second position. They are both based around the note G, but one is a type of major scale and the other is a type of minor scale, okay? So the major variant here is the major pentatonic which sounds like this. The minor scale is a minor pentatonic, which sounds like this. Let's go back to the major pentatonic. So in this scale, there's only one bend, the three whole step draw bend. And if you can get that, you can play every note in the whole range of the harmonica, which is really nice. You're not just being locked into one octave. It's also a very good fit with the blues and major rock. I really like it personally, and if you haven't tried it yet, I suggest that you do. All right, so that's the major pentatonic. Next, we have the minor pentatonic, which is the minor version of the scale here. Now, in this scale, in the low and middle octaves, we have two bends, which makes it a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna play it starting on the middle octave, and then I'll do the low octave. So that's the three half step draw bend. two whole step draw bend. So there's some tricky notes here that you're going to have to learn to be able to hit to really make the most of this minor pentatonic. Now you might have in your head that the you might know how to play the blues scale. Is that different or the same as the minor pentatonic? Well, it's essentially the same thing. We're just adding one note to the minor pentatonic, which makes it the blues scale. And to play the high octave in the blue scale or the minor pentatonic, you're gonna to need to overblow on hole six to get access to those higher notes. So just keep that in mind. The minor pentatonic and the blues scale is a really good scale for playing the blues. I mean, we see blues in the title. We're like, ah, that's the one I need to learn. But there's a lot of restrictions here based on your bending and overblow abilities to be able to play the whole scale throughout the whole range of your harmonica. So just keep that in mind. It could be a little bit limiting. Now, if you don't want to be limited because you're still working on your bending, you can also try a third second position scale, the no bend blues scale. Now this is a scale that I cooked up by combining the major and minor pentatonics and removing the notes that have bends. So this scale does not have any bends, but it will still allow you to jam in second position by borrowing notes from both previously mentioned scales. It's great for playing over a major blues track especially, and it sounds like this.
to review, second position just means that you will be playing a type of G scale. We have two main options here, the major and minor pentatonic scales. The blue scale is just a variation on the minor pentatonic. Also, I've worked out the no bend blue scale if you want to try playing in second position, but you can't bend very well yet. Now compared to first position, second really feels very different. For one, the chords now have different musical functions. So the three chords we have, which is the C, the G, and the D minor, while those chords become the one chord, which is the G, the four chord, which is the C, and a minor five chord, which is the D minor, and that matches up with the chords that the blues uses, one, four, and five. I think it sounds pretty good to just cycle between the one and the four chords. So this position is ideal for creating solo harmonica jams using uh, some rhythmic chord playing. Something like that. Finally, I want to talk about learning songs in second position. Now, it's kind of a mixed bag in this position because it is very good for learning actual harmonica songs. Most harmonica players use cross harp most of the time. So for learning real harmonica songs with a recorded harmonica player, most of the time you're going to be playing in second position. But just be aware that regular songs, like songs that you like, are not going to fit super well here because there are some really important notes that are missing unless you can overblow. So if you can overblow, you could really play any song in second position, but if you're still working on that skill, then you're gonna find it at least a little bit limiting, but it is very good, as I said, for learning actual blues harmonica songs, which is what you're gonna do in this position most of the time. To wrap it up here, second position is versatile and it's usually the kind of home default position for most harmonica players. It's usually the best choice for the blues in most cases and it can be used with a lot of music that's in both major and minor keys because of the two different major and minor scales that you can play here. All right, next we have third position, which is often referred to as slant harp. Now this is based off of the second note of the major scale in first position. So just like we did last time, if we have a C major scale, that's a C and the second note is a D, okay? So third position is going to be focused around the note D. Next, let's go talk about these scales. Now in third position here, we have a blues scale that's just like second position. It's in a different key, but the notes are gonna function in the same way, but you can hear this scale sounds a little bit different than second position. Has a bit of a more aggressive bite to it. And it just has a very different aesthetic to playing in second position. Now, obviously this third position aggressiveness is very good for you know some kinds of blues music, but definitely rock music and other kind of minor music that has a little bit more of an edge to it. So just keep that in mind. Third position is really good when you wanna be a little bit more aggressive. Now we have the blues scale and the other main scale here is the natural minor scale and it's nice, but one important note is missing until you can overblow. Now, chord-wise, third position is not quite as strong as a second or first position. So you get the minor one chord, which you get in the middle octave and up high two. And you potentially can get some other two note chords or some split chords, but in general, you only really have that one chord and you're really not gonna use it very much, which makes this feel pretty different than playing in first or second position because you're not relying on chords very heavily. Bending wise, third position is very similar to first position. The middle and high octaves are easily played without bends, but the low octave has a lot of difficult bends, right? So the middle octave here, pretty simple, but the low octave, 
a lot of tricky bends. Now, I will say that third position is more beginner friendly than second position. Now, you can wait a while in the scheme of things to play that really bendy low octave, and you're still gonna be able to play lots of tunes and be able to improvise in third position like you can in first position. It's really pretty easy. And for songs, third position is really great for learning songs in a minor key. So many songs in general are either going to be in a major key or a minor key. And if you have a minor key song, you can probably work out a way to play it in third position. But remember, there is one important note that is hidden behind an overblow, so that could throw you off with some arrangements. To recap, third position is for playing minor songs and to improvise in a minor key. Now, this can be good for the blues as well as other genres of music with minor or sad sounding songs. The lack of available chords in this position means it feels pretty different from first position and second position but it still can be very useful and fun. Also, it feels a little bit more like rock and roll than first position. So if you are new to the harmonica and you want to try some of that like blues and rock style playing, but you can't bend yet, then you might want to check out third position and I think it'll scratch that itch for you. Now, these are the three main positions, but there are more like fourth position, fifth position and 12th position. I'm going to cover them really quickly here, starting with fourth position. Now, fourth position, on a C harp is going to be based around the note A, which is found in the low octave on a three whole step draw bend. So that's the starting note. And it's a little bit awkward, but if your bends are good, you can get used to it. So fourth position makes playing a natural minor scale pretty easy. Take a listen. Now this scale is like the minor version of the normal first position major scale. It requires one bend, as I said before, the three whole step draw bend. So that makes it a little bit more difficult and I wouldn't try this if you're a total beginner. Fourth position I feel like is very fun to play in and it's really the best for very brooding, sad harmonica music that's being played over like a minor track or a minor song with a band, but it can also be used for blues and rock as well. Chords are really nothing to write home about here and the bends are nice, but they're not really necessary. So fourth position, really great for minor music Music feels a lot like first position for some very obvious music theory reasons that I'm not going to get into and uh, it's something worth checking out for sure. Next, there's fifth position, which is very similar to the major pentatonic in second position. Now on a C harp, this is focused around the note E. Minor scales are easy to play here, so consider this position to be minor. Now the minor pentatonic starts on two blow and follows the same note pattern as the major pentatonic shape that you may know already. The bends here are pretty minimal and the chords are actually pretty useful. You get a major three chord and a six chord. It's different compared to what you're used to, but you can find ways of using these chords and comping with them when you're improvising, as an example. Finally, if you can overblow, you can get a few extra notes here, which are useful too. I really like fifth position, especially for playing funk music. I just feel like it's a really good fit for funk music, but it's decent for the blues as well, and you should check it out sometime. Now we come to 12th position. This is F on AC harmonica which starts on the two whole step draw bend note, which is pretty difficult. So I definitely wouldn't try this if you're a total beginner. From here, you can play a major scale just like first position. Okay, so just like first position, this could be very useful for learning major key songs, but the bends and the overblows that this scale in the full range of it requires can make this pretty tricky. I have heard some nice jazz playing here, so that's something to consider. If you're a jazz guy, you might want to explore 12th position. In 12th position, the chords are really not useful, so just don't think about them. And this position's hard. There's a lot of bends, and if your bends are rock solid, I'd say it's worth attempting just to experiment with it. It's fun, but not really practical. So I hope this guide helped connect some dots for you. If you want to check out my scale cheat sheet, you will get help with all these scales that I went over today. And uh, that's it. I'll see you next week. Peace.